you know, it feels quite fitting to come crashing in during the actual intro as that's exactly what we saw today as Rangers fans came crashing back down to earth as we were reminded of the mentality that's bred in this Rangers team that when push comes to shove, unfortunately, certain players just didn't have what we need them to have as second place Rangers find themselves absolutely slapped off the park, out for out what and out ran by second bottom of the league, Ross County, as Ross County won easily. And truthfully, I didn't want to be saying that, ladies and gentlemen. I'd hate that I need to sit here and say that about the team that I follow. Again, moving the players' feelings, again, I care about the team. The players will come and go. They're good. We enjoy them when they're all here. But the team is what I support and love. And to see the team continue let down time and time again is infuriating, but again, I'm speaking for a Rangers then, and I'm going to be looking at it from a Ranger fan perspective, I'm going to be digging out A, B and C, and talking about why is he going to be selected, and I will be questioning the manager's decisions in these games of football, right, because again, that's how I see the game as a Rangers fan, but on the flip side of that, no matter what I say, my frustrations and my disappointment in Rangers, it doesn't take away from the fact that this game was not lost by Rangers, it was won by Ross County, and I imagine there'll be mere fans of another team round about this video than the actual Ross County fans, but if you're a Ross County fan, you must be proud as hell of your team that came in against all odds, punched upwards, and fought for their, their, their SPFL lives for the first whistle to the last, and that's what you want as a fan. You want the full-time whistle to go and know your players gave absolutely everything, and that's what you go in this game of football game. Aye, it was frustrating about this. Aye, it was ugly about this. But the truth is, the team that came into this game looking to fight and win it, won it, ladies and gentlemen. The team that strolled into the game thinking the points were already won and there was bigger games up come upon the horizon, lost it. That's the tale of the tape, ladies and gentlemen. And you know the old saying that your dad's probably said to you many, many times, hard work will beat talent when talent doesn't work hard enough. Well, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, there's your perfect example. Don Cowie's side with a budget of a packet of quavers beat Rangers' side with all the money and the finances that's available. And some people say, aye, but this guy was missing and this guy was a missing. Just look at the two teams, man. Let's not go down that road. It was not a day with A, B or C missing. It was all up here. Who actually went into that game looking to fight and win and win every ball? It was Ross County. And you know what? The best team today, the best team today won. And that's sickening that I need to say that. But it's not the only thing that I'm going to be saying that's making me feel sick as we now narrow in and look at a Rangers team. A Rangers team that almost, they're like, they're starting to live in again. I'm not happy with, right? And we need to accept there is a place in football to talk about and question and criticise a manager or a foot wanting them to be sacked, you know what I mean? Because I was really unhappy with the starting 11 with Scotty Wright being dropped into it, blah, 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 last week. And I'm even more frustrated this week. So again, I feel like I can criticise Clem on my foot, panicking and saying, oh my God, he's wanting him sacked. No, I didn't want him sacked, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to learn, I want him to learn his lesson and realise that every game is vital in the SPFL. You can't bring in duffers and shite bags into a team thinking, well, we, oh, there's enough quality in the park, we'll run all over him. And he needs to just play his best players that's available from the start so because we can't go into keep going into games gone behind the prime pool and losing momentum because that's what we're seeing we saw it old firm when he brought in Scott Wright for example in to the starting 11 what was that all about ladies and gentlemen nothing against Scotty himself but he was picked for a must win old firm game and then dropped not even making the bench versus Ross County let's say that again he's picked to be played versus Celtic, but it doesn't even make the bench versus Ross County. Surely that's got to be the other way about if you're even looking at that. But even if that, I wouldn't agree with that notion because dropping and bringing in players and giving them games and letting them run through versus dross in this league or lower league teams in this league just isn't the right mentality, especially at this point of the season because there is guys in the like say Ross County and all that that is fighting to keep food on the old table, ladies and gentlemen, you know what I mean? Because if they go down, they're losing their wages and they're probably going part-time, they're going to another team. These are guys that's backed in a war that's coming out scratting left, right and centre to bring in shite bags, like the Barisic. But he's an epitome of my problem with the entire notion what we've got going on right now. See all this? Oh, drop him in. Drop him in. 
drop them in and see how what it just doesn't work. We're supposed to be one game at a time. It's supposed to be that mentality that's took for the Patriots. Let's focus on one game. Focus on one. then why are we not playing our best players? Why are we bringing in the likes of Barisic who in his last two games, not including today, which he did get subbed off and was dreadful again and being at fault for another goal. But his game before, Hibs, right? Subbed off early. Absolutely rotten in that game at fault. Directly at fault for a goal. His game before that at Com uh, versus Kamarnock where he just fell in the corner. He's been directly involved and subbed off early in every single game he's played in the last three matches. Why on earth do we keep putting him actually in here? It's no good enough. See if you actually want to win things, you need people that's tuned in and here. No boys with one foot out the door wondering where they're going to be next season. And again, he's not the only one that was pathetic the day it was honestly across the line. Genuinely, the defence, again, troops, again, is dreadful. But what seconds me about the defence, ladies and gentlemen, is you look at your last two games. We've conceded six goals in two games. Celtic was against uh, conceded three and Ross County we conceded three. And you know what's mad about that? See who our best defender is sitting on the bench. Now remember, I'm saying defender. I'm not saying ball playing guy that can drive forward and pick the pass or the guy that's really good at hitting long range passes. I'm not talking about the modern day crap. I'm talking about the best out and out defender we've got is sitting on the bench watching this team ship six goals. What does Leon Balligan need today to get on the actual park? We're at the part of the season again where people are scrapping and fighting for their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we might need somebody that can actually win a heater now and again, you know what I mean? And actually can handle a bit of physicality, but nothing was done at the centre-back spot when we felt it was needed to be done, the old firm. The decision was made at left-back. That was a place that we weakened from strength at the old firm to bringing in Barisic and the likes of Silva and that starts the game of football again, falling about the place, no being involved in the game of football when it should have been Rabi Matundo. But everybody you think should get a game, Disney get a game, and everybody you think Disney get a game, gets a game. And that's how you get in a mess that you are right here. That all the momentum that we had, all the hard work, the blood, sweat and tears we put in to be top of the league before the Dundee debacle has all been chipped away thanks to ourselves. And it feels, again, troops, self-inflicted crap for it all. The way done. And you know, I've been saying a line the last couple of weeks is we're not sitting the top of the league right now. We are being robbed of sitting top of the league right now because of forces outside of our control in terms of Dundee's part. But that's not the case anymore. With performances like that, like a first half last week versus Celtic in a must win game, and a 90 minute performance like that versus second bottom of this league, we genuinely didn't deserve to be top of the league. We just didn't anymore. And the Ross County game a couple of years ago with Diallo's first game when it finished 3 3 comes to mind where we threw away another momentum really threw away and it feels like we've done that as well ladies and gentlemen and maybe we like this player and like this player and we like him over this guy at the other side at the old fun coin but what they've got is mentality ladies and gentlemen when push comes to shove they get amongst it when push comes to shove with too many players on your team they seem to shrink and today's just another example what more do I need to what more can I say how can I defend this ladies and gentlemen look at it for budgets doing to anything you want we should have won this game there is zero excuses not to win this game Ross County sits top, uh, second bottom of this league with the second worst goal difference they've got a minus 24 goal difference they've conceded 54 goals in the league so far this season the only team worse is Livingston who again are a pub team this year, they're already doing, they're done ladies and gentlemen, so you're talking about apart from Livingston, by far the worst team overall in the season for the first minute to the last has just ran all over us and all we could uh, muster and all we could score in 98 minutes of football versus statistically the worst defensive side in the entire league barring Livingston Football Club is a fluke on goal by one of their centre-backs who was outstanding on the day and a 90th minute penalty. That's what we could muster versus that. There's no excuses, ladies and gentlemen. We lost the battle up here and on the part. And you can never do that if you want to win things. But I guess we're here for the game recap, so let's get into it then, shall we? Because if you ever wanted an example or if you missed the game, you're thinking, CG's coming out very harsh. Your CG sounds disgusted. You'll see why, because in back-to-back -back games, we should have been behind in about 30 seconds. Uh, the game is Ross County's George Harmon misses an absolute sitter at the back post to take the lead for Ross County unless 
than a minute. You think about last week's old fun game, right? Conceding the way we did. This is your next game that we've played. How are we that slow? How is Goldson just out of the line again keeping them on side? Do you know what I mean? It's dreadful. It's a ball down the right-hand side. Ross County, again, Goldson's about a mile behind the rest of his defensive line. The ball comes in, and it's no Tavernier doing a good bit of defending at the back post. No, it's Seymour that's doing the back post defending and... You know what's weird about Tav today? I'd argue this is the worst performance I've ever seen Tav have. Ever. Ladies and Ever. And I know he scored the penalty and people will throw that in my face. He couldn't connect a single pass today. Every cross was dreadful. Every corner and set piece was stinking. And he was one that you looked to to really lead us and pull us through. But the day, ladies and gentlemen, where I have given him so much credit for being usually the guy stepping up when everyone else has fallen, he was about as pish as the pishest player on the actual park, if we're calling it how it is. Penalty or no, couldn't care less. He was dreadful. And see my build on out the bushes and that occasionally a good bit of defending. But even in saying that, if you're a Ross County fan, you're looking at that saying, that should be one. But again, we need to talk about Golton because in the third minute, he has a free header that hits over the bar and, you know, water's wet. It's vintage Connor Golson troops. What do we say? Our entire set-piece philosophy is blocking. We want everybody to block for Suter and Golson. Why? Neither one of them. Can he do the football? What are we actually doing? It was great to see the outswingers come back because the inswingers look very dangerous versus Celtic, so it makes complete and utter sense that we reverted back to the outswingers. But aye, Golton in the opening five minutes of the game misses a free header and is three yards behind a chance it should end up going into the back of net. It was vintage for the big man, unfortunately, this season. And did we really offer any to response to that start? No. Can't we had to do a really good bit of defending? There was in the first ten minutes, there was a real argument and a case that the best defenders on the park were Seema and Cantwell because both of them had vital interceptions and vital tackles. Nobody else in the back line did. I don't care who your favourite of the month is or you like this guy or no. They were dreadful. They can't win heaters. They can't track men. They can't defend. And guess what? That's in the title. That's what you need for all of them. I don't care how good they look when they're running the ball. He's a good passer. We need defenders, troops, and we didn't have any on the actual part of the day, and I somehow, someway, we ended up taking the lead in the game, and it's probably maybe ironic that it was Baldwin that scored the fluke header, and it was actually an outswinger, but again, it's flicked on to Nabe, and the only reason it goes in is because Jack Baldwin ends up just missing it, and it completely like, kicking away, I'm not wanting anything, oh, we scored for an outswinger, nah, troops, Baldwin scored a goal in his end back in net. It was a complete fluke in that occasion and you think to yourself, right, he scored an own goal. He's got an early booking but did you see him for the rest of the game? I'm not saying he should sign for Rangers or anything like that but did you see the way he defended for his life through his body on the line? Even when he was injured about the 6th, 8th minute that we will talk about, he got back up and then threw his body in front of another shot sticking his head in, nearly collapsing and colliding with the actual post. Did you see the difference in mentality of a defender? Then as we've took the lead, it seemed to take the wind a little bit out of uh, Ross County's sails, ladies and gentlemen, and Dessers does some good work as he bulldozes over a couple of people, creates a chance for Cantwell that's fantastically saved by Laidlaw. Then you've got Tavernier hitting across, kind of on the deck, but Seema does so brilliantly to improvise, flicks up and over, and Laidlaw just gets his hand on it. That little spell was about the best as we played, but it only lasted three minutes. Who was the next team that created the next opportunity? It was Ross County as they cut inside beautifully, running away for Tavernier, cutting inside. Connor Golton Sims then hits a brilliant shot that is outstandingly saved by Jack Butland. Or oh, that's another goal for Ross County, ladies and gentlemen. It is pretty blatant in that one as well, but it's a great save. And I'm just saying, why did they look like the team that's trying to push for the top spot and we look like the team that is shell shocked and doesn't know? What today? But I do want to pull back and go back to a conversation with point we've had many times over the actual season and especially in January when you play bad, which is always going to happen throughout a season, and if you are running your luck or being this or being a wee bit lucky on this occasion, you need to take the chances when they're hand wrapped to you and in the next minute, the 27th minute of the game after a really great pass for Lundstrom, it's got to be said, he was dreadful the rest of the day but what a curling pass, Silva tries to cut inside, has a shot, it's deflected to uh, Dessers, he's free in the six yard box, he needs to put this into the back of net but he kicks it straight at Laidlaw and again maybe I'm being critical here but I think if the ball drops in the six yard box if you want to be lifting trophies at the end of the season, your number nine should find a way to put that into the back of net, but he Disney, 
ladies and gentlemen. And that's just another wee reminder. When you're playing bad, you look at the chances we're talking about here. We need to put them away and just wrap up the points and steal the three points. Carry on for the actual there. But we just didn't have it. We never recruited good enough. We never went and got a goal scorer. Again, we brought in Silva, who does everything great but score goals. And then we didn't score the big goals when we need them to. And then everyone's shocked in it. Surprise, surprise. We didn't go and get a defender that can that can actually defend. So we're left with the ends that can Surprise to surprise. This is who I'm talking about. self inflict It's in every facet of our actual game. If you outswingers, when it just hurts us to the constant nonsense where our recruitment by playing the two centre-backs that can actually defend in the partnership that doesn't work. It just doesn't work, ladies and gentlemen, to bring in an attack that's everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, it really, really is. And aye, we should have made it 2-0 there. We should have stole a 2-0 lead there. But we never. We kept rolling the dice and kept giving them the chances. And what happens? Well, the 37th minute of the game actually happens and Ross County should be level as George Harmon again should slap it into the back of it as he has another free shot on goal as Sims picks him out. It's just dreadful to fit. I didn't know where Barisic is in this clip. I just didn't, ladies and gentlemen. They come down the left-hand side of Rangers. I don't see where Barisic is at all. He passes it in. Sims does really well. Quick feet. Gives it to Harmon. Harmon blows it out of the bar for five yards. That would have been the stinking blow or punching blow that they actually truly deserved. But somehow, some way, we go into halftime 1-0 up, absolutely stealing that game. And that's including Dessers' pullback from Barisic that he sends at the stadium. But I'm expecting that for the big man, you know what I mean? I like his work rate, I like this, but we need a goal scorer. And we haven't go went and got one, Rangers. Well done on that fact. And it, we didn't need a shank, did we? Nah. We never even needed a goal scorer. We need boys that can run the channel and play nice football, don't we? Aye, ladies and gentlemen, well, you reap what you sow, and this is what we've sowed. Now, I jokingly put Rangers sits forward in the second half because I was like, it was carbon copy a part kid. Again, just obviously Ross County never had the cutting edge that obviously Celtic did to really be ahead. It was a carbon copy. We were just as pathetic in this first half as we did versus Celtic, but you can understand it with Celtic because they've got genuine good players and everything like that, but Again, no disrespect to Ross County, when you look at the budgets and availability and everything like that and the two sets of players, we should be running all over them. It's unforgivable to play this badly versus Ross County. So I jokingly went, Rangers are going to have to sit forward again in the second half. Are they trying to play ropey dope? Are they trying to do this? Are they trying to let teams on it and they may attack them? But no, we're just playing pish. The new and Ross County had the ball in the back in it just two minutes in to the restart. And this is where, again, I need to look at the likes of Claymont because he's watched that first half. And a great idea that doesn't care nothing about football can see something needs to be done there. Again, I wanted Barisic off. I wanted Silva off. Because they were dreadful. The left-hand side of Rangers is dreadful right now. And the right-hand side's no much better either, by the way. But I'm just pointing out that was the two subs that I'd have actually made. Because you can. Tavernier's maybe got a goal on him. Seymour's maybe got a goal on him. Barisic has not, And Silva has not. So what we actually doing? Doing their bit. We let it come out in the second half and there's no fiery response, there's none. Barisic with his first touch in the second half just kicks it straight out the park. For us having the ball, kicks it aimlessly out the park. And for there, throwing, long ball, getting down and the balls into the back of net. Now obviously they truly deserved that goal and I'm taking nothing away from the actual finish as well. It was really well scored by Ross County. But you're looking at it, that's us restarting for the second half, supposed to be coming out and firing. What was said? And they say, were we laughing in the halftime? Were we going, oh, we got away with that, Ian lads, eh? We'll play better. Is that the mindset that we had? Because it seemed that way. Because it was shocking the way we'd done it. So anyway, it was 1-1 to them. 1-1, um, sorry, to in the actual game. And then, less than two minutes later, troops, two minutes later, we are 2-1. Down. And I've been talking a lot about mentality for the last couple of months. And you talk about George Harmon. Missed two absolute sitters for his team. Goes into halftime knowing he's missed the two sitters. That would probably break a let someday in our team. Honestly, see half the team that I could put right here or anything like that. I'd say, aye, if they'd done that, they'd fold the rest of the day. But that young lad, he stayed at it. Baldwin, who scored an own goal, got a yellow card. He could have caved. But the two of them stood up massively in the second half. And they end up getting the goal that Harmon does. Is they get a counter-attack down the channel. Lundstrom's having to play left back because where is their left back? He's doing the same thing as he done at Hibs. We trot back, 
ladies and gentlemen. But it's fine because he says no apologies holding a flag and we all eat up and think, oh, he's funny now and everything like that. Well, he's no good enough and he shouldn't be playing on the park because he's nowhere. Taverniers, nowhere again. The Goltons had to go at right back. Suiters then had to go into right centre back. Lundstrom's had to go left centre back slash left back. It's just an absolute mess and Cowie again just picked the holes in it and it's a great finish. Again, it is a rebound. Obviously, Jack Butlin does what he does. He makes a great save. Look at the responses of your defenders as Harman's the first one to react. The exact same as the first one, by the way. I've not even talked about it. Simon Murray hits a shot that's brilliantly saved by Butlin, but who's the first one to actually respond? Simon Murray, who hit the shot. There's just... There's just nothing there, and it's so similar. It's so similar to the Mullerwell game where they think it's over, they think it's done, they think they've already won before turning up. How many slaps in the face he's need? How many bumps in the road? How many years needs to be instilled in these players, the core players that play week in and week out, that they can't ever go in with this mentality? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you just saw another opportunity and another momentum and another chance to be sitting top of the league sprinkle right through your hands. But aye, it's cool, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure they'll talk their talk in the press conference. We're going to learn for it. We're going to do this. And it'll be the same pish next week. And then when we're actually 2-1 down and we need to now score two goals to be in a winning position, Clement decides to make the changes he should have made when he was putting the team sheet together to start. Or then, at least when he's watched it unfold and go completely wrong, the changes that should have been made at half time. Barisic and Silva off, obviously. Ladies and gentlemen, and Silva can throw his wee tantrum and pretend he was... Well, show that fight on the park, mate, you know what I mean? He showed me a fight being annoyed that you got subbed off than you actually had on the actual park because you were invisible on the actual day. Couldn't he care less about the theatrics and everything like that? You can maybe post it on your social media or whatever and that, but no interested in that. I'm interested in what's actually on the park. And besides Cantwell, who at least tried a couple turns and tried to go forward and try to play through balls and try a shot, hit the bar, who else was actually trying anything to go forward? Name one. The changes, the likes of Rabi Matundo, who again deserved to start this game, did create a chance in the, as soon as he came on, actually, he was whipped across in for Dessers, but it falls to him again and it somehow is blocked. The usual water is actually wet. We keep pushing, we pushing. Seymour then has a couple shots that's um, blocked again. You're thinking to yourself, what is going on here? You're thinking, right, it must come new, we must come new, it must come new, but the quality just wasn't there, ladies and gentlemen. It wasn't as if we were banging on the door constantly and carving the moment. It just wasn't it. Like that, and Ross County get the third goal of the game that they are they deserved because there was the only time we were in the ascendancy of the game is when Ross County started to roll about the ground and start to time waste but when they actually remembered wait a minute the Rangers can't handle anybody running actually at them let's just continue to do that they then created some chances again and the third goal is the absolute killing goal and it's a great goal of quality from them but again where's Tavernier in this year? run down the channel where's Golton can we get a challenge in anywhere no the only in trying to make a challenge is Sterling but to be fair to be fair sorry Sims does him brilliantly with a little fake fake shot lets it roll on his right foot and puts it in to the back and it. We're talking about a player with the composure with three defenders running up a fake, then tuck it away beyond Jack Butlin, who's one of the players of the season on the SPFL this year. And then you're looking at the crap that we've got going forward and blown and things out of the stadium and everything like you're saying, what is that? Have we swapped jerseys? Because if you just asked a neutral who was chasing and trying to finish top of this league, they would tell you Ross County. Honestly. I forgot to mention that Tom Lawrence was the one that was turned for the original bot passes. The guy fakes it inside and takes him a walk. But Lawrence has been dreadful for weeks now, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? It's just the way it's been actually gone for him. But Cantwell then hits the bar after he gets a nice pass played into him. Rattles, I think, the underside or whatever. It doesn't go in anyway. Obviously comes back out. There was a lot of huffing and puffing. A lot of crosses. Roof came on for Dessers again. We've just we've just got the work. We just never put mere forwards on the box. Mere, I know he was dreadful, Dessers, but at least they occupy his space then it was just roof again we're just we're so tied in to be the one thing that we need to be there's just there's just none of that flexibility ladies and gentlemen and i don't know why we're starting to do that because it used to be here we kind of go two up front when we're three one down i know people say oh, well it was dessers you'd have took them off anyway but can you not just put two strikers on the park three one down can we not figure out a way to do that no it's got to stay okay Fair enough, but anyway, huffing and puffing, we whip across and we end up getting a penalty kick as the ball deflects off the head into the arm. Now, I'm going to say the same thing as I said uh, the Benfica game with John Souter is, I thought the rule was if it hits a defender on the way to hitting the other guy's hand or if it deflects into his, that it wasn't a penalty, but now 
apparently it was 100% a penalty and fair enough but I'm just so confused by the rules ladies and gentlemen I thought if it hit somebody then hit someone's hand it was near a penalty but it's given as a penalty and up steps Tavney to get his goal but it means nothing like, it really means nothing because the summary of what this game was is after we made it 3-2 90th minute we find out there's 8 minutes 7 or 8 7 minutes whatever it was 8 minutes whatever it was um, Ari Don the crowd starts to roar what did we do for 53 seconds Troops, Lundstrom to Suter, to Goldson, to Lundstrom, to Suter, to Goldson, to Lundstrom, to Goldson, to Suter. 52 seconds, 3 to done, 91st minute of the game, we sat and done that, ladies and gentlemen. That just tells you everything, we just weren't in that game, we never had believed we could get in that game, and there was a couple of crosses, I think Ruth tried an overhead kick or something at one point, but I wouldn't have cared, if this finished 3-3, I'd have the same demeanour, the same mentality, and the same disappointment, because a draw should never be happening in this game, if you want to be lifting things, but it was now, ladies and gentlemen, but again, there's nothing we can do, we can only support the team, and sing the songs, and back them, it's on them to go and do their jobs, and guess what, surprise to surprise, that they actually never, maybe next week, we'll actually play our best defender, maybe just put them in, for a game, you know what I mean, see a defender actually win a heater, now and again, maybe we'll stick to in swinging corners, instead of changing it, week in and week out, to block for Golden and Suter, who can a heater the ball, maybe we'll play more attacking players, maybe we'll play the players that deserve to play and maybe just maybe we'll drop the boys who are clearly so far off the boil they're a liability and having to get subbed off every single time early maybe ladies and gentlemen that's all we can hope for feels a sad one the day obviously we have to win versus then we're one, one point versus Celtic we need to do this and this and this but the way we're playing the new, ladies and gentlemen the way we're starting games are you excited to see us play, I'd be licking their chops if there's a team, I know Dundee's not really got much to play for now that they've obviously finished in the top six, so we'll maybe run all over them on Wednesday night and blah blah blah, maybe, ladies and gentlemen, but teams that are scratching and fighting for things and trying to get close, they'd have to have a look at Rangers and say, let's have a go, because defensively, we are shambolic, but again, I've said the same thing since January, even when we were winning, I do not like Suter and Goldson together. I just didn't like it, and it's clear to see actually why. We've now went five games in a row without keeping a clean sheet. The first time since 2021, I believe. Guess who this the partnership was that spearheaded every one of those games? Exactly. Changes going to be made? Maybe. Are we going to say a lot of stuff in the media? Maybe. Are we going to do this? Can we actually just day it on the park and not rely on a fluke on goal and a penalty versus a team that's conceded 56 goals? I think I said 54 earlier, but it's 56 goals in the league. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Say one a day, slapped in the face, but we got slapped in the face by Millerwell. We never learned for it. Hopefully we'll learn for this one. Until then, until the next game, I've been CJ92. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.